Well, hello and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, today we're going to talk about installing a radio tower. How about that? Telescope Man is going to get himself a radio tower over the next few months. The base has been put in. Uh, I'm going to do the rest of this video with pictures, but just wanted to give you a little shot of the uh, base installation. It's sitting on uh, three foot by three foot by four foot deep, filled with concrete, and uh, it should be a good base for this antenna. It's going to be about 35 feet tall, not including the mast. Uh, at the top and it will have a Mosley 33 beam on it when it's finished and I'd like to give a little recognition to one of my Elmers uh, John Walker uh, with the Rockwall Radio Club who's been helping me uh, with this installation so hopefully uh, some of these uh, pictures I'm going to show you in a minute will uh, help you uh, along the road with your uh, ham radio hobby. Anyway, we're going to go uh, back in and uh, I'm going to do some screen recordings and uh, combine that with this video and give you an idea of how this was installed. Okay, so now we're back inside. I'm on the computer. I'm going to show you a few uh, pictures of the process of the construction of this base. So, uh, originally, you know, I had to determine uh, to make sure that the antenna would clear some trees that were in the backyard. So, I just took some rough measurements. And knowing how big the antenna was, I could figure out that it would clear it. And then I had to decide exactly on the position of the pad uh, next to the house, the pad for the tower. And all we did was we just simply stood up a section of tower and uh, made sure it cleared the house and uh, made sure it wasn't too far away so that I could mount a house bracket and then just mark that on the ground uh, and that's where uh, the folks uh, did their uh, dig out of the hole according to those marks. All right, so uh, you know we started uh, by framing it out with two by fours. Later we would put another row of two by fours on top of what you see when we actually got ready to pour. That was to give me uh, about four inches above grade. Uh, when they finished because uh, I and we also sloped it at about a half inch so it sloped away from the house about a half inch lower on the right hand side than on the left hand side to let the water run off so here we go we've just started digging Okay, so uh, just about finished digging here, pretty close to the end. Uh, the last foot was hardest, that's what they always say. Uh, anyway, the hole uh, was four feet deep when we got done. It was very square, uh, square sides, uh, flat on the bottom. Um, we didn't disturb any of the dirt, uh, you know, on the sides, so I should have a really good solid uh, pad there with no problems. So here's a shot of the finished hole. Notice how square the sides are. Everything is square. And uh, the I didn't actually take a photograph of pouring the gravel in the bottom, but we did put several inches of gravel down there, which you'll see in the next photographs. Uh, that's to protect the bottom of the legs of the tower. And here we are positioning the tower in the center of the hole. They're doing a little measurement on that. You can see the gravel that's down there right now in the outer cage of the rebar pretty extensive rebar system. You're going to see that in some of the next uh, pictures. Uh, they really built a, a great uh, rebar cage in there with that tower piece. So uh, I have no doubt that it's going to be there for a long time. 
And uh, here's a shot down there before we started doing the rest of the rebar. You can see the gravel down there. We poured extra gravel on top uh, after we set the tower down on some gravel to make sure that the holes uh, that are in the bottom of the tower where you normally put bolts, make sure those were uh, in gravel so that water could drain out through those holes. So. Uh, I really feel that the uh, bottom of the tower is well protected uh, from rust with that gravel. Here's a shot of uh, the rest of the rebar cage and you can see they went across several times with a large rebar. I believe it was number six and uh, crisscrossed uh, through the tower on the bottom middle and upper part of it and the kind of the neat thing was as they were pouring concrete they put more rebar in straight up and down uh, while they were pouring so here we are uh, we're pouring concrete uh, we did order a truck <laughs> truck came out uh, had to pay a little bit extra to get him out there but we used a concrete truck and the crew uh, used wheelbarrows to shuffle the concrete over to the hole from the truck that was parked in the street. Uh, we specified 3,500 pound concrete, uh, which is should be sufficient for this tower. And, uh, you know, it all went very smoothly and very quickly. I was uh, real surprised how fast it was poured. They said it took a little more than one and three quarter yards. So here we are, we're about finished and they're prepping the top of the concrete now and they did a great job uh, smoothing it all out. I've had some questions on uh, where'd I find these people? Well, I happen to live across the street from a great big uh, marina on the lake and uh, I got this contact on this company from the marina people. They use these people to pour a lot of concrete pads and things uh, for them at the marina. And they also work for the city of Terrell. Uh, and they do the street repair for the city of Terrell. So it was kind of a lucky strike on my part that I happened to stumble on these people uh, by checking with the marina to find out who they used for concrete because I had tried four or five different people and uh, either they didn't call back or their prices were simply outrageous but uh, these uh, guys were very professional and I know a lot of you are asking is that tower straight well yeah during the pour they uh, did measurements on all three legs multiple times while they were pouring the concrete to make sure the tower was perfectly straight. Uh, when the concrete was finished, uh, final measurement, and everything was perfectly plumb. And so here's the top of the pad after they finished prepping it. Looks really good. Of course, I put the date on there. I've got the date and my call sign on that pad. So uh, uh, real happy with it at this point. And the final measurement after the concrete's been poured. And uh, as you can see, the tower is perfectly straight up and down. Turned out great. But we're not finished yet. Uh, here we are installing uh, three ground rods, uh, eight foot ground rods. Uh, we position them uh, parallel or in a line with each of the tower legs, uh, about a foot away from the pad. These were driven into the ground and then we're going to uh, show you the trench that we dug around the tower. Uh, and that we interconnected with the uh, heavy gauge ground wire. We interconnected all three ground rods in a halo around the pad. And more shots of the halo system. Uh, remember, we've got three ground rods. 
uh, positioned around the tower and now we're connecting them together with heavy gauge uh, number four I believe is what it was uh, number four uh, ground regular unshielded ground wire and the we're gonna attach these each one of those rods to one of the legs of the tower with copper strap and uh, that will direct any energy from any uh, lightning strike down into the ground in a much wider area uh, the halo area around the tower and just one more shot of the uh, grounding of the tower uh, we dug down maybe four or five inches into the ground to lay those ground wires down and uh, it does encircle the entire pad, so the, each leg should be well protected. And just a final shot of the tower from the backyard. And I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Larry Jennings, WB5IZL, over at the uh, Greenville Radio Club for his help uh, with some of the electrical stuff and he let me see how his tower was all constructed which helped a bunch and again I'd like to thank John Walker over at the Rockwall Club for his great help. Anyway, as I usually do, remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Yeah, it's still up there and 73 to everybody that's watching. More of this stuff to come, because the tower's not finished yet.